A non pulsatile swelling is least likely to be which of the following in origin? Okay, now a swelling is any projection or protuberance seen on the surface of the body, and it can be because of various causes. It could be because of some trauma, it could be because of inflammation, it could be because of a tumor which could be benign or neoplastic. So, in order to identify the type of swelling, there are some diagnostic tests that we can carry out. So, we can inspect the swelling to identify its color, the shape, the size, etc., and also certain other clinical tests which involve palpation of the swelling. So in the palpation, we can check for the rigidity, the fixity of the swelling to the underlying structures. We can see the compressibility, translucency, etc. One of these tests is also the pulsatile test. Okay, so these pulsatile swellings are usually seen, uh, or these pulsatile swellings usually have a rise and fall with each pulsation that is felt in the arteries. So it is obvious that there is going to be some relationship of these swellings to the blood vessels. Either the swellings could be because they arise from a blood vessel such as an aneurysm. Okay, so these aneurysms have a type of uh, expansile pulsation. Or it could be that the swelling is very close to the artery. So this will have transmitted pulsation. Or it could be that the swelling itself is very vascular such as a telangiectasia. Right. So how do we carry out or elicit this pulsatile test is you have to keep uh, two fingers along the edges of the swelling okay and with each pulsation you will notice that the swelling is going to rise and fall so if the swelling rises and falls okay in the same direction that is uh, there's a more parallel uh, movement of the swelling then this shows that the swelling is very close to a blood vessel or an artery Okay, so like this, in this image you can see there is a tumor that is lying on top of an artery. So every time there is going to be a pulsation in the artery, it is going to be transmitted into the, to the swelling as well. So that is also going to rise and fall along with the pulsations in the artery. This is known as transmitted pulsations. Okay, transmitted pulsations. The second type is expansile pulsation. So, in case you uh, place your fingers over the edges of the swelling and the fingers rise and they move apart from each other, okay. So, the direction of the movement of the fingers would be away from each other, okay. This type of a swelling is known as expansile or this type of pulsation is known as expansile pulsation where the fingers rise and they move away from each other. This shows that the pulsation is being uh, generated within the swelling. This is usually seen in swelling such as an aneurysm. So an aneurysm is a uh, any weak joint in the artery. Okay, so if the artery wall has weakened, and supposing this is the artery wall, okay, this section has say weakened. So here is where the blood will start getting collected, and a swelling will form. Okay, so in such swellings, the uh, the entire aneurysm, the swelling is going to uh, feel the pulsation. So it is going to rise and fall in this manner. Okay. So the pulsations are being derived from within the swelling. It is not adjacent to a blood vessel or it's not adjacent to an artery such as in this situation. It is arising from within the swelling. So that is a type of an expansile pulsation. Okay. So if there is pulsations felt with a swelling, it is because either it arises from an artery, it's lying very close to an artery or the swelling itself is a vascular one. So if it is a non-pulsatile swelling, then it is likely that the swelling is not vascular in origin. So a non-pulsatile swelling is least likely to be vascular in origin because if the swelling is vascular, it is going to have some amount of pulsation either transmitted or expansile.